Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on Artist of the Day. Today I have the honor to have an exclusive interview with the artist Georges Louis Calderon, alias Damenfang. To his exceptional artworks and creativity, he will be recognized by international art institutes and companies. Mr. Calderon has won several awards and Adidas Original appointed him as Ambassador Street Artist. He is a national representative of graffiti and urban art for several South American countries and is a special artist of the city of Queen. Oh, friends, it is a pleasure for me, this interview. Uh, well, let me introduce myself. I am Jorge Calderon. I live in China for 11 years. I am back in Ecuador, my hometown. And I started in the world of art from a uh, very baby, since I was four years old. But when I was 16 years old, I started uh, seriously into the world of art, taking some classes of oil painting and going to the community of artists in my country and since that moment I started realizing that this is going to be my future, my profession. I found it's going to be a very thought path but I always have this passion and inspiration for painting and doing portrait, portraits of my surroundings. So for a very long time portraits of people was my main subject and with the time when I start traveling around the world I start realizing that there are some subjects that uh, captivate my attention more than the people itself. So it became the beginning of my concrete abstract collection. How did you find your calling? Call. Uh, when I was a kid, I already had this call of being an artist. I think my call is very natural because since I was a kid, I always had this urge to express myself and words was never enough. I was actually pretty good in, in, in school in lit literature. literature. Um, when I was speaking and reading books, in a very young age, I read several books because my parents had a huge collection of, of, of books uh, and a small family library. And I, I, read in, I read them all before the age of eight. So I had a very strong literature background in my head, in my, in, in my soul, and I started doing poetry, I started writing, I, I, I wrote music uh, with a group of my hip-hop friends. I actually was doing hip-hop, I was writing some lyrics, but that was never enough for my soul to express what I feel, and uh, that was a blessing, but also was um, a weak point of mine that I always wanted to express more and more and share my feelings and open my heart to the world because I just feel it that was my nature, something I cannot contain. And in this way, doing graffiti was a big way to release that anxiety, that tension, that uh, problem of my mind that I found back there that I really needed to be seen, to be recognized as a teenager, I, I really felt that I had something to say and I really wanted to, to, to do it big. So when I was doing graffitis, different to my peers, to my graffiti friends, I was doing graffiti as a self-promotion, uh, big scale advertisement size uh, billboard. It was just a big format for me to, to let the people know that I am here, that my city have this level of artist I always thought that my art was in a global level, so I wanted to show them, I wanted to inspire, and actually that became a, a, a legacy. In my neighborhood and neighborhoods around me, uh, there was a lot of graffiti artists starting doing what I was doing. 
Some even copying my style, my colors. Uh, this is okay. That was part of the of the dream, but this is this is how I started, right? Doing art to evoke the spirit of creativism and to inspire people, especially kids, uh, teenagers, to do something more than you know. In Ecuador, people think that if there is no football, then you drink and work, and that's life. Uh, of course, we have a lot of cultural expressions, but mostly this is what you can see in the in, in, in the youth. So I was doing something a little bit different with the art that was not popular when I started doing it in the 2000s. And um, that was always my call. And this is still being my call. So when I'm painting and I'm trying to do some murals in my city, it's not just to be more popular. It's actually to let every kid dream that they can be the next me and they can be even better than me. So that's, that's my real goal and that's what I do for, for my work. You have been named National Graffiti Artist for three years in a row and you're the representative for South American countries for graffiti and urban art. Where do you get your inspiration to create such works of art? I get my inspiration from reality, from the daily life. The inspiration is everywhere. And one of the moments that I got my uh, most strong inspiration was looking at my friends. When I was talking with my friends, I have friends from so many places. And even in Ecuador, you have so many Uh, colors in the faces of the people. You have so many um, nationalities together because it's a very diverse country. So I just started uh, going to places and watching the faces of, of my friends. I just started asking them if they can let me do portraits and I start developing this style that is my character face. When I was in China in the year 2018, I felt myself surrounded by so many problems of daily life. I quit my job. I was looking for myself. I was thinking, should I work as a designer? Should I work in the corporations or shall, should I uh, pursue my dream career as an artist? So one day I got lost in the city. I remember very clear. It was Shenzhen. I was work, walking under one of the biggest uh, highways of the city. And I start feeling that there is so much life and beauty in, the, in those brutal structures of the highways. And I was standing there for the whole day. So I watched how the hues of the light was creating these amazing shadows and the flowers trying to grow in the middle of these gray ambiences. And when in the night you start watching the... the the lights of the cars moving around, I start having a vision of a, of a collection where I write, I paint an ode to the beauty of the city. And that is the beginning of one of my biggest creations. That is the collection Concrete, Concrete Abstract. As a Latin American artist, I have a lot of inspiration from the magic realism. So there is a lot of fantasy together with my portraits of daily lives. So you can see uh, fantastic things uh, together with my paintings. Your concrete abstract collection has been categorized by pop surrealism and new Latin art. Please tell us something about it. The pop surrealism is uh, a category of art that, um, that I subconsciously I was, I was working on. So when I was invited to the Psychonauts exhibition in Mirror Gallery, Denver, this was one of the biggest, uh, really one of the biggest uh, expositions, group expositions in, uh, in the United States. There was artists from all around the world and I was very proud to be perhaps the only South American artist invited there. Um, so it was really it was really big for me so when i was going there 
I was writing my biography and I was giving some of my information to the, to the gallerist. And I had the help of uh, La Gata Verde, which is a great historian of art in Spain. And she said that looking at my work, my paint, my colors, my palette, the subjects, I uh, fall in the category of pop surrealism because it's, as you can see, the oniric trips and the traveling uh, through my mind, looking for the, the crazy landscapes and buildings mixed with human parts and, and um, this humanization of the architecture. It's, it's, a very, it's a pretty surreal subject, but since most of my icons that I use to paint are pop figures, such as a hip hop artist or people who was important in certain areas of the world. So then my, my, my work became a, a very clear, clear pop surreal work of body of work. Uh, some people also call it a psychopop or a new, figurative, new figurativism, something like that. Uh, internally, I think what I'm doing is the new Latin American pop art, and this is a current that is not so popular around the world, but there are some very strong niches that recognize the work that we are doing, some artists, and yes, is, um, naturally, all these works are having a very strong presence of vibrant colors that represents proudly our culture, our ideas, our personalities and uh, the, the fruits, the subjects, are actually pretty intense because we talk about uh, subjects like sensuality, um, feminism, uh, humanism, uh, futurism, in my case, architecture or futuristic characters. Uh, so you have a very diverse uh, subject being explored in my, in my work and the Latin American culture is very present. I actually started doing my work inspired by the music. So I was trying to translate music into characters. So you can see, I, I have some paintings that represent what cumbia is, what merengue or salsa is as a body of a person, and the colors and the figures around are um, defining these, these subjects in a very pretty way, in a pretty uh, sharp way. So that is, that is what my style uh, actually is. Concrete abstract is a term, a terminology or a name that I give to my creation because I realized that the concrete, the creations of the world, like what is concrete as materi like material things, are concrete things. And abstract is the, the thinking, the, the world of mind and thought. So if you think in this way, the world is an abstract, concrete fight. So the, the fruit of our thoughts are the buildings, are the cities, are the highways. But the highways, the buildings and the cities are also material to produce ideas, concepts, uh, stories, stories of love, of success, stories about many things that are happening in our minds. So this is something that also reminds me a very important time of my life where I crossed a line in my career working for more than 10 years as a graphic designer in these corporations, amazing places, workplaces that I was uh, working at. But there was, all, there was always something missing in my heart because I left my career, my graffiti, the time I was doing urban artists, traveling around South America and the world, representing my country as a street artist. So there was an inflection point where I, when I decided to, to step aside and focus on my work. And then I started doing these residency program and I created this inspirational, uh, very important moment in my life that I call it the concrete abstract because it was a, a challenging time of, of my life. And thanks to that, I won a very important art contest, which is the Dean Collection, Q2 
curated by Alicia Keys herself and Mr. Swiss Beats, which is until now one of the biggest achievements for me as a person, but also as an Ecuadorian, I, I think it's one of the highest, if not the highest, accomplish, accomplishings of an Ecuadorian urban artist in the whole history of the country. graffiti a major European cities. Is there a city that you particularly like? I found the graffiti very inspiring in the big cities of Europe. To be honest, I think my biggest inspiration of my whole graffiti career is, is Europe. There are some artists, especially I, I will say Germany, uh, Berlin are the most inspiring places for, for artists especially in graffiti, because there was a big exodus after the 80s, 90s, right, from, from the mecca of graffiti that was initially New York, and most of these big graffiti artists went to Berlin for some reasons, right, and they started creating amazing movements of art. There are some graffiti artists that became the biggest inspiration of, of me since always. You have Dame, you have Flying Fortress, Lumit, uh, Cantu. All these guys really impressed me so much. Not just as a graffiti artist, but also as a graphic designer. And uh, even in the multimedia world, they were so creative that they was even doing websites. That was super outstanding. And I really love that. Then you have Pari, people from, you know, there is like uh, the, the, the French fathers, right? You have the one, two, three clan, amazing designers as well, graphic designers and graffiti artists. So this is basically one of my biggest inspirations. I think France is also, as it has always been, a source of inspiration for innovative art. There are some crews like French, German crews, like this McLean crew that totally defied um, the rules of graffiti back then, and this is where I started thinking, well, graffiti is not just words, but it's also art. In that field, the need I had to connect all these round of things that I was exploring before, from graffiti to graphic design and art, and uh, yeah, thanks to them, thanks to them, acclaimed crew. And yeah, of course, you have also uh, amazing art from from England, you have uh, the, the, the fathers of, of Stainsill there, you have Liverpool, Bansy, and all these uh, group movements there. All of that have been inspiring me so much, so I think I always look up at to the European big cities. And one of my dreams is still, until now, live there for a while, uh, do some residencies in France especially, I have a lot of friends from France. I, I love, I'm even learning to speak French with them. Uh, je suis le garçon de Le Garde du Monde. Um, you know, as a South American, we have always like a very nice connection with the French people. Uh, our cultures are very similar. And I would love one day to do some residencies in, Paris, in, in France, in Paris or, or any beautiful city of France. Will there be an exhibition about your artwork or an art book about your artworks? Since, since the pandemic, I haven't made any uh, big uh, exhibitions yet. I had a lot of work that I put on standby because of the, the situations back then. And it's been already three years that I haven't shown any of my works on group shows or any uh, galleries yet. But I have been creating some pieces. I had an idea to work on around 20, 30 pieces in my city because I want to do an exhibition. I still don't find the venue. 
Uh, I'm not sure actually when it's going to happen because you know it takes a lot of time, especially since I work in several projects. But in Ecuador, the government have a lot of projects to support artists and give uh, grants and things like that. So I am applying to two of the major cultural exhibitions of the city, and if I win, uh, you will have you will see my next exhibition in Ecuador in the next nine months. So crossing fingers, um, praying for this to happen because I am applying to one of the toughest uh, contests of, of art, seeing is, um, is a prize for the trajectory, for people who have more than 20 years uh, on arts. And uh, it's funny that I am that young, but I have more than 20 years doing arts. And as a graffiti artist and as a urban artist, I represent that, that movement. So if I win that prize, that will be not just for me, but it's for the movement. That will be a recognition that we really deserve because if there is a group of artists that move culture in the country for, for the last 20 years, it is the street art and we really deserve some, some gratification for that. And, uh, once again, if I win that, it's, it's not for me, it's for, it's for the culture. So that is the, um, that is the thing. And secondly, yes, I am working on a book. So this book is uh, already going to be on PDF. Um, initially, I'm going to share this. Maybe I will share it to you because initially it's going to be for cultural managers and people who is working in culture and arts. But later, I'm going to also add some of my favorite sketches even. So people can see the, the creativity for the last 30 years. Um, the, all these ideas that came in, in my early stages. And that will be a huge blessing for me. Of course, I would love to capitalize. So I am looking for publishers who can be interested in this idea. And thanks to the magic of AI, uh, I think we can translate this to French, to Spanish, to English, and that will be, that will be a great step to do. The municipality of Quinto appointed you as a representative of contemporary art as a part of the Hummingbirds Garden. How did this come about? We was called to this project called the Garden of Hummingbirds of Quito, that was already, we was already working for about five years with the municipality of Quito. Um, I started doing a connection a long time ago with uh, one of these major cultural managers of the city because I, I got an interview in, in the radio. I was in the first, actually I came out in the newspapers because somebody loved my, my graffiti and I went to the newspapers. After the newspaper, somebody saw there, uh, found my phone number, they called me and they asked me if I wanted to have an interview in the radio. When I was in the radio, somebody from the municipality contacted me and said, look, I listen to what you're doing. Seems like there is a lot of social um, direction in your work. We want to do something with social impact. So they create these um, murals. We, ate, we made eight murals to fight against the female violence in Ecuador because it's a big subject here. So we created that and it was an amazing project. So since then, every year we was working in some cultural activities with the government. And when they created this project of the human bird garden, they gave amazing statues of human birds to around 20 or 30 artists of the city. And all those was like very uh, famous artists actually. It was a pleasure that they invite me and my brother to be the urban artists of the city, the only ones who, who made something there. So it was, that was amazing. And um, something that was great is that the administration of that time took these human birds and fly them all around South America. So my pieces was traveling around many places. And since then, many people took pictures and showed me where this work was. And what is your future ambitions? Did you have a wish dream? Yeah, I have a dream. My biggest dream is to become 
the main artist of my country. I know it sounds very crazy, but I'm already doing that. It's, it's a sadness that my country doesn't know what I'm doing outside. Maybe because I was doing this um, not in the scale that I showed, um, but I'm ready and I'm, I'm preparing myself to do this next step. I, I really want to represent my country around the world seeing as I have this facility of crossing continents and speaking in some languages, I think uh, I could easily be an uh, ambassador of the culture of my country in many other countries. This is something that I surely want to be. But my biggest dream is to focus on the art career and put the name of Starman Funk as an Ecuadorian street artist in the major galleries of um, contemporary art and bring the money and, uh, and, and pay for all this dream that took me more than 30 years. The investment of 30 years, I think, is the time for get the payback. So my biggest dream is to convert all these efforts in an economic blessing for my family and for my upcoming generations. So sorry that it sounds very mundane and very material, but I think the gratification of your hard work is needed. And that is going to influence also a lot of artists. And I think if there is something that Ecuadorian artists need, is a guidance about how you can translate your talents into money, into incomes, in ways to, to, to pay your education, to give your mama a house, to, you know, to, to do the big dream of South American football players. Thank you.